Hi guys, welcome to another ZBrush free tutorial. Now this was done for Nick Carter who asked a question on one of the ZBrush groups, which was how to create this kind of uh, armor on here and get it to fit so well on the front. So what I've done is, yeah, obviously this is a piece of armor that's been created. So I've just done a, a sphere here so obviously a sphere is quite hard to actually get something to fit to it and I just want to show a few different methods on ways that you can get or create something in here for armor to work so the first method they're going to use is going to be a mesh extraction now with a mesh extraction method I need to make sure that my geometry is quite dense so I've divided this to subdivision level 5 which gives me roughly on here about 2 million polygons so quite dense so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this extraction method and I'm actually going to turn on my symmetry so I'm going to come down to transfer to the um, editor down here oh transform symmetry activate it on the X so you can see I've got the two lines here I'm just going to lock this front forward so I'm basically holding the shift key just to lock it in position and then I'm just going to kind of draw the shape that I would want to get this to kind of look like so let's just do something like this and then use the alt key just to take away a little bit of that to get some sharper corners in here and maybe here as well and pull that back and do something like this along here and down here so I've got a nice kind of sharp shape. So I'm going to bring some little bits in and out of here to add a little bit more detail in. And that should do it. Okay, now I'm going to sharpen this up. So I'm going to press the control key and alt and I'm going to hit it a few times. So it sharpens this mask right up. And then we can go in and do a mesh extraction from this. So with the mesh extraction, I can come down to extract here and we can just test it out by turning it slightly sideways and then hitting the extraction seeing if it's thick enough now you can see that's not too bad i might want it a little bit thicker than that so i'm just going to up this a little bit more and do another extraction to give me something slightly thicker let's go a little bit more okay that looks good and i can click accept and you'll notice there's a mask been applied to this straight away um, if I turn the polyframe on you can see that it's separate polyframes I'm going to get rid of this mask by pressing the control key and dragging and now you can see that I have actually got separate poly groups so I could if I wanted to push this in and out so I could press the control shift and click on here then I could mask this out control shift and click control click once to invert then I could use something like the move tool in here and I can move this in and out to get the exact thickness I want so I could come in like this now at this point of course you can then go and put detail into this by going down to you could actually dynamesh this up so I could take this to a nice level like 1000 I could hit the dynamesh button here and that will then be dynameshed so that would allow you to then go in and add additional features in there so if I use something like the clay build up brush here I could put some additional features in here and start to make it look like a piece of armor press one on the keyboard to just repeat those then you can obviously just dynamesh it again and use the shift key to smooth those areas out giving you some good effects so that's how you can get that kind of effect now another way of doing this could be to actually use um, come back to the sphere turn this off I'll just turn this one off Another way to do it would actually be to use this as a retopology object. So I could come in here, Just let's just name this now. Let's call this uh, base one, hit enter. And I'll come down here to the Z sphere. And under the Z sphere, I'm gonna come down to topology, uh, sorry, rigging, and I'm gonna select the base. And I'm gonna select that base one. That'll appear in there. Now I'm gonna come to topology and I'm gonna hit edit. So this will take me into edit mode. Now I'm going to make sure that I have got symmetry turned on on the X. And now I'm going to click and I'm going to start to drag out some points here. And this gives me a very controlled. Now I'm making sure that I have got quads as I'm working. So I'm going to put this in the middle now. Come down here. Quad this up. And kind of do that. So now I've got that and I was happy with that shape. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check it. So I'm just gonna hit the preview here. 
Now you're gonna see it's gonna go really weird. So I'm gonna hit preview again. I'm gonna turn density down to one and DynaMesh down to zero. Now I'm gonna hit it and we've got exactly what we produced there. So if I'm happy with that, I'm gonna click make adaptive skin. That's gonna make an adaptive skin here. So now I can return back to my base model. Remember the extraction, I can come into here, go append, and I can append that new skin that we created. And here it is here. You can't see it because it's right on the base. It's actually on the model. So if I go to transparency mode, you can see it there. Yep, and I'm on that one. I'm gonna to go to the Z modeler. I'm gonna go over one of the faces. I'm gonna go all polygons, Q mesh. I'm gonna turn off symmetry at this point. I'm gonna click this and I can drag it forwards. And now you can see that I've actually created that depth there. So if I dragged it forward there, I could go into the edge and go maybe something like bevel, and you could bevel those edges down like that. Then when you're happy with the overall look, you could actually go and subdivide it. So obviously subdividing it, it's gonna cause it to go a little bit kind of soft on the edges. So if I do this, you're gonna see it's gonna go really soft. So what you can do is you can go into crease, you can just hit the crease button there, and now you can subdivide, it's gonna give you something a little bit better. Or you can turn this off, click it once, and then turn it back on, and then subdivide it there. Now you can see you've got nice sharp thing in there, and then you can obviously go into DynaMesh and put this on to about a thousand. Gotta click no to this, and now I've got that in DynaMesh mode. I could then turn this back on, and I could start to work with it. So I could use things like clipping, so I could clip some of these edges down. Let's go to a curve, drag across, Oop. drag across and hold the Alt. Let me just put this onto sub. Sorry, let me just go into control shift and choose one of the clipping curves there. And that should be good. And then I could start to clip this out. Press the alt. And you can clip that down. Then of course you can redynamesh it. And then you could go into clay tubes and start to add your detail, you know, the same as we did before. But that's how to get it to lie on the top. Notice we've also got our polygroups in there as well. So we could isolate the polygroup and move stuff out. So that's two methods there for creating that. The other method that we can use is you can create something flat and then you can actually project it onto the surface. So I'm gonna show you that now quickly. Let's go back to this piece and let's go and create something like a polyplane. Let's take this polyplane and let's go down to the initialize settings on the polyplane. Let's bring these down a bit here. Um, I don't want that many. So I'm gonna put like four in here and maybe four in here. And that would do. I'm gonna say, right, okay, make polymesh 3D. I'm gonna come into the symmetry, turn that on. I'm gonna mask this corner out and then deselect it. I'm gonna to go to scale and I'm gonna bring these corners in. So I'm basically shaping this now as I want it. So let's just do something simple. This is just to give you the idea and do something like that. That's good. That's good enough as a base and bring that down there. Maybe scale it in a little bit there. So we got that kind of thing, but notice that it's completely flat. You can't see the other side because that's the reverse face. So just make sure your faces are the right way. If you do want to see the other side, you need to come down to display properties and then hit double, okay? But I always leave it off just because I can see it then. Okay, let's now go, I'm gonna turn this polyframe back on. Let's go and add this to the other piece. So I'm gonna call this is test 
and we'll jump back to our piece which is here base one and I'm going to go and I'm going to append that new test in there so there he is so what I'm going to do now is I'm basically going to take this and I'm going to move it forwards I'm going to move it forwards and I'm going to scale it down and position it so let's get it there at the moment it doesn't conform to the shape but in a minute it will so I'm going to put that over it like that I always make sure perspectives turned off by the way back into draw mode press B and then Z on the on the um, thing and we're going to do a Z project so I'm going to bring the brush size really up it works best with this so Z project we're going to face it so we're facing us this is the way we want to push it back and we're just going to hit this and you're going to notice because I've got the brush size nice and big it's actually gone to the shape of that circle so now I can go into the Z modeler brush bring the size down again go over one of the faces make sure it's on all polygons and then I can drag it out and there we go we've got that on that surface there fixed to that surface so I can then go and divide this up let's divide this up a few times obviously the shapes changed a bit we need to crease it but for this demo I'm just showing you this as a basic and then you can go into your Dynamesh again let's just do that turn the subdivision levels off and once again you can come in and start to use some of the tools to actually put designs into the piece and you can also build these pieces up so you could use a combination of pieces to build it up so that's how you can kind of get stuff to conform to other pieces of geometry inside of ZBrush. So hopefully that's helped you, Nick. There's uh, three methods there. You've got the extraction method, you've got the retopology method, and you've got that Z-depth method as well.